Okay, so in in the clinical trial, you were using、uh, glucose control, which、uh, you you call like the clinical level one,、um, and that which is kind of more expensive. But you have like a cut down, or or a, a, I guess a less potent version of that called metabolic daily.、Uh, so is it? Can you talk about the difference between those two? And、uh, so what what is metabolic daily? Is it is it identical but just less? Yeah, it's basically just a lower dose version. Essentially, what happened was we released pendulum glucose control in order to be able to make the claims from the clinical trial around lowering A1C and lowering blood glucose spikes. You basically can't mess with the formulation at all. It has to be exactly what was done in that clinical trial, and so it is a really potent formulation. It has the fully, you know, full dose of each of those strains that was used in the clinical trial with people with type two diabetes. And so, therefore, it's it, and and it's actually really expensive to make. We do all the manufacturing ourselves. These are strict anaerobes. Each one is its own little diva in how you have to generate it and manufacture it. And so, the price of the product is relatively high compared to other probiotics because it's expensive to make at that dose.、Um, I will say I am on pendulum glucose control. I don't have pre-diabetes or type two diabetes, but I am aging. And as you age, your body's ability to metabolize sugar、uh, gets worse. I didn't really need a doctor to tell me that. I know that. I can feel that. But I wore a continuous glucose monitor. I did a placebo trial on myself,、um, and I actually knew when I was on the formulation because my workouts were stronger. But then when I saw my continuous glucose monitor data, I also saw that all of my glucose spikes and crashes were minimized. The area under those curves was less when I was on pendulum glucose control. Pendulum glucose control also has to be refrigerated in order to maintain that viability that was used in the trial. So it's kind of got some finicky parts to it. It's expensive. It has to be refrigerated. And frankly, for a lot of people, when they see there's something that's for people with type two diabetes,、um, it doesn't really resonate with them. They may want to manage how their body metabolizes sugars, but they don't want to take a product that is for people with type two diabetes. So we actually got a lot of feedback of people asking us, "Can you just make a lower dose version, which is for people that don't have type two diabetes?" And also, is there a way that you can drive down the price through this lower dose version? And the answer to that was yes. And so, we had patients, or we had sorry, customers who were taking not the full dose of pendulum glucose control because they were trying to save money and they're trying to eke it out, and they were sharing back their data with us of, "Hey, this is still helping me with my A1C and my gl- blood glucose spikes." And so, we didn't run a clinical trial on the lower dose. But we had enough evidence and demand from customers that we brought this product to market, and so it's simply a lower dose version of pendulum glucose control. It has all the same components. It acts in the exact same mechanism of action,、um, and it's you know at a much lower price point.、Um, and it it's it, it actually can't say that it's for people with type two diabetes because we haven't done a a, a trial in people with type two diabetes. But、um, that's really it was an it was a response to the market demand for that kind of a product. Does it also need to be refrigerated? It does not, and、um, and actually, pendulum glucose control. It, there are five strains in there, and、mm-hmm. we have worked to get all the strains to be room temperature stable. But there is one kind of diva strain that still requires refrigeration in order to maintain that really high dose.、Um, and so, with metabolic daily, because you're okay getting it to a lower dose, it actually doesn't need to be refrigerated in order to be at.、Um, Uh, you know, not quite the same efficacy as glucose control,、um, but it allows people to kind of travel with the product, throw it into their cabinet with their other、uh, supplements. It just allows people to bring it into their everyday lives. And you know, look at the end of the day,、uh, we are here because we want to help people improve their health. And you can't help people improve their health if you give them a product that they don't want to take, and so or they can't fit into their lifestyles. So,、um, Metabolic Daily is really intended to be that. So, if we're taking metabolic daily, so when when is the best time to take it?、Uh, is it kind of with meals or not, or in the evening?、Um, again, this is going to be a very unsatisfactory answer, but it sort of depends.、Um, and I think that、uh, when we did our clinical trial, we asked people to take pills in the morning and in the evening, and the reason for that is because. Um, we don't know when people eat their meals,、um, and we also don't know anything about、uh, transit time to their gut.、Um, and so we were tr- basically saying, if you take one in the morning and one in the evening, chances are we're going to hit you somewhere in that system where the thing is going to get to the gut, you know, where where it belongs.、Um, <laughs> the reality is that.、Uh, You know, for most people, that's a really hard regimen to be on. So I myself, I take two pills in the morning with my coffee because that's when I can. That's when I got my whole routine. If you ask me to remember to do something at the end of the day, it's never going to happen. So you know, do the do the thing that makes sense in your life. The reason to take it with food is.、Um, 
for some people, uh, they're sensitive to some of the components of capsules in general. And so um, if you have that kind of sensitivity to the capsules, taking it with food can really alleviate that. Um, and another reason to potentially want to take it with food is that um, your stomach is quite acidic. Uh, these are in a pill that is enteric coated, so it actually is intended to get through the acid of the stomach. But when you eat food, you raise the um, pH of your stomach. And so that can also help the capsule kind of get through the uh, danger zone of the, the stomach acid and into the GI tract. So how long should people, how, how long will it take to see an effect and actually, it'd be interesting. I mean, what kind of effect would you be would you expect to see? For some people, they can see an effect as soon as a couple of days in, and for other people, it takes six months. And it really has to do with, I think, a lot of different things. The first is, you know, what is your starting microbiome state of affairs, and what are you really changing with this product? Um, but then also, how is your microbiome uh, kind of coordinated or talking to your the host to your to the rest of your system? So the kinds of things that people experience, kind of uh, in in short order, tend to be around digestion um, and GI distress. So, uh, you know, in the form of, you know, being more regular in the form of, you know, either diarrhea going away or constipation going away, or being able to eat foods that they didn't use to eat, or having reduced gas and bloating. Sometimes those digestive things and GI things are, are some of the first things that people observe. Also, because I think it's something that, you know, many of us maybe are sensitive to, we're, we're, we're being thoughtful about what we consume and when we consume it in order to not have GI distress. So that will often happen up front. It takes 90 days to change your A1C. That's the number of days it takes for these hemoglobin cells to turn over. So you are unlikely to see an A1C change, you know, prior to that, because that's just the amount of time it takes for A1C cells to, uh, for your hemoglobin cells to turn over. Um, and then somewhere in between there, as your body is actually metabolizing these sugars more effectively, there are a lot of kind of, um, softer benefits that people can start to see before they even see changes in A1C or changes to their blood glucose spikes. Oftentimes people will, when, when you're able to metabolize your sugars better, instead of being on this roller coaster all day long of sugar highs and sugar lows, you're a little bit more stabilized. And so for a lot of people that shows up as I have more sustained energy throughout the day, you know, I don't have this post-lunch uh, slump that, that many of us experience. Um, I don't get brain fog. I mean, it used to be for me, if you had a meeting with me at 9 a.m., you got a much sharper version of Colleen than at 4 p.m. And so what happens is that this kind of allows you to be a little bit more stabilized throughout the day so that um, you have kind of that sustained energy, that that sustained um, acuity. For some people, they have better sleep um, and, and, and just sort of generally more energy. And so these are the things that are oftentimes associated with uh, uh, metabolic syndrome. So if you can't metabolize glucose, you tend to have these slumps and kind of these highs and lows of sugar highs and sugar crashes. Um, and so it's those kinds of things that people start to observe. And one of the craziest things uh, was that we have like 70% of the people that are on Ackermansia and Metabolic Daily have told us that they're on it because they have reduced sugar cravings. Not because they're, you know, they're, they're seeing any of this other stuff, but they basically realize um, after being on it for sometimes within, you know, 30 days, they have less sugar cravings. And we were really scratching our heads for a long time about why that might be. And just to tie it back to our early conversation, um, we now know it's because it really is stimulating this GLP-1 production that is very tightly linked to satiety. And so um, those are the other sorts of things that people find is some of these reduced cravings. So while we're talking about uh, kind of customer feedback, uh, do, do you have any other kind of strange or, or, or interesting feedback from, from your customers? Yeah, I think that cravings one was sort of the one of, one of the most interesting ones. Uh, one of the other ones is weight loss. And so we did not see weight loss in our clinical trial. We started to see it maybe a little bit showing up towards the end of the 90 days, but it, it certainly wasn't, um, you know, I, I would not say it was uh, statistically or clinically significant in that trial. However, what we do find is that a lot of customers are reporting that they are experiencing weight loss. And I think it has to do with... Um, 
sometimes when people are starting on, you know, a good behavior, other good behaviors kind of come along with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think that if you all of a sudden, you know, start to experience reduced sugar cravings, um, that that can make it easier to make healthy choices about eating, which again, you know, can start to propagate itself. And then additionally, um, in our clinical trial, we ask people don't change anything about your life, just take the pills. Um, And we don't do that with our customers. We essentially educate people on what are good foods that can feed these bacteria. What are we even give people, you know, we offer meal plans for people. So you can actually create meals that are around uh, trying to increase uh, these gut bugs. Um, And we share out information about, you know, what is healthy nutrition and what are some good substitutes. So instead of eating a bag of potato chips, you know, switch to pop chips. So like even these very small changes can start to add up um, and giving people sustainable changes that they can make in their, in their nutrition is really helpful. So I think because we kind of deliberately provide these additional tools around nutrition and the gut microbiome um, that can also help people kind of get onto this, this better path. So that's been another Mm. one. Mm. Interesting. So have you looked at autoimmune disease uh, and whether acromantia would help with that? And, and kind of, I guess more widely, have you looked at like LPS levels at, at all? I mean, that may not be easy to measure, but I guess if the gut lining is better then LPS should be lower. We have not done any trials around that. Um, and actually, you know, I don't know that we've had, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, I don't know that I've heard about a, a substantial number of people reporting that, you know, we definitely get a fair number of one-offs. Uh, and so I think the important thing here is to try to understand, you know, to your point, is there a mechanism and is there enough evidence that people are really seeing a change? And I'll tell you two things um, kind of that, that have been really interesting. One is that we have customers and actually physicians that are using um, acromancia for skin issues. So acne, rosacea, atopic dermatitis. And the underlying mechanism is around these interleukins. So acromancia's ability to lower IL-17 and IL-23 is likely the reason why it's able to help with these skin issues because you know underlying these skin issues is actually an inflammatory response. I, I always think it's it's funny. We we think about all these skin care products. They're they're almost all topicals. It's like if you're driving your car and the check engine light comes on and you put a piece of tape over it and you say, Well, now that now that's gone. And you didn't actually check your engine. And I think that happens a lot with these skin issues, which is that we put topicals on to cover it all up, but underlying it is actually this heightened inflammatory response that if you could tackle that, you could really help with the skin. So that's one. And then the other one that I think is really fascinating is um, the ability to, uh, for these strains and particularly acromancia to interact with and enhance uh, the efficacy of checkpoint inhibitors. So we actually have oncologists and um, we have customers that are using this to help bolster their chemo. Um, And we actually have had people come back and report, you know, I thought that my uh, patient was gonna have to go through four rounds of chemo, they only went through two. Um, This is a really interesting early science. When we think about the drugs that we take, how our microbiome interacts with them and how um, some of these strains might actually be able to enhance the efficacy of some of these molecules. So um, I think that's really pretty interesting.